Hi, window watchers. Come on in. I've got a whole lot of paper right here with in front of me and some pencils. And if you happen to have some paper, any size, any kind, handy, go and get it right now, will you? And then perhaps we can do some of these things on paper together. The first thing that, that uh, I'm going to do or, and show you how you can do is something that, well, it's kind of a game that you can play. There's no, no one wins and no one loses, and yet it's kind of fun, too. It's hard to play by yourself. Well, you'll understand why as we go along with the game. But it's called Fold Over Picture. That's what we're going to make. And the first person that starts drawing on the piece of paper draws just one thing. And when they've finished, they give it to someone else. And the second person draws something else and a third person draws something else and so on. Well, now, you probably will think, well, that's not going to be any fun. We can uh, do that any time. It's just like telling a story, you know, when one person starts out and the next person adds a little bit and a little bit more. You know what's going on all the time. But it's not so with this picture that we're going to draw right now because each person that draws something, they don't know what the next person is going to draw and they can't look at what the person before them has already drawn. It works like this. Right up at the top of the piece of paper, you start out by drawing some sort of a hat. So we'll put a hat on here, right here at the top of the paper. There. Now, a head comes under this hat. The next, you finish this one, and the next person is to draw the head that goes under the hat. Well, you can give him a little start by putting two lines like this running down from the top of the hat, you see? But now, remember, when you've drawn this, you've got your back to everyone else and so that they cannot see what it is that you have drawn. And when you're finished making the hat, then you fold your paper under. And after you've folded it under, you can see only these two little marks here at the top. So then you hand the paper to the next person. All right, now I'm going to have to pretend that I'm another person and I don't know what's folded underneath here. I don't know what's been drawn, first of all. And my job then as a second person is to draw a head. So we'll draw a head with a funny looking face on it here like this. This is what the second person has drawn. And now, of course, the second person doesn't show what he has drawn to anyone either. And he puts the neck on the head like this, so that when he has finished his drawing, he too folds the paper under like this, smooths it down, and hands it to the next person, and the next person sees only these two lines right here. All right, now I'm not the second person anymore, but I'm the third person, and my job this time is to draw a body any kind of a body whatsoever. Well, what kind of a body shall I put on here? It can be a person, an animal, a bird. It can be almost anything. And since I have the beginning of a neck here, let's make a giraffe. There. But those legs haven't been finished, you see. And so that we'll know that he's a giraffe, we better put some spots along his long neck like this. Now you see, all the time, you're, you're probably thinking right now, well, that's going to be a silly looking thing, and that's right, it is. But you see, you really don't know, you're not supposed to know, the things that are folded underneath here. Just as this third person who has drawn the body doesn't know what's folded under there either. And when they're finished, they fold under the body. 
along with the hat and the head. And after they folded it under and creased the paper like this, then they hand it to a fourth person. Now, this fourth person can see these three sections right here. Well, it must be something that has three legs. Or perhaps this, they would think this third one was just a, some sort of a tail or something, and they could just leave it there, or they could make it into a leg, too. Any kind of legs whatsoever. So the legs that I'm going to put on front here are going to be just like this so that they will look like trouser legs. And what am I going to do with this back here? Well, this fourth person might think that there is something else standing by a man right here. And perhaps this looks like some sort of a bird's leg. So down comes the end of the bird's leg here. And he extends the man's leg out from under the trousers, folds the paper, and of course he has to be careful so that no one can see underneath. And then another person has the problem or the job of putting the feet onto the legs here. So let's give this guy feet that look like this. There's one, and the other one will have come this way. There. Oh, what's going to happen to this one here? Well, perhaps the fourth person doesn't exactly know what this is, and since he can't ask anyone and no one can tell him, maybe he'll just put a stand on the bottom of that one like that. Now, if there are more people than this that you are kind of playing this game with and you want to pass the paper around some more, you can have them standing on all sorts of things. We could have this person here fold the feet under like this, and we could have them standing on a tree of some sort. So there's the tree. Now, we're all finished. Everyone has added their little bit to the picture. And, of course, you see, no one knows what anyone else has drawn. So after the paper has been all passed around, and maybe you want to start two or three at a time, start one with one person and another piece of paper with another person, so maybe there are three or four pieces of paper going around at the same time. Look what happens when we open it up. There's our picture. Don't you think it's rather silly looking? this piece of fold-over art, that no one else has known what the other person has drawn, you really have no idea of what it's going to look like. And the hat doesn't look so bad on top of the head, but if, we'd, if the second person would have put a bird's head on there, it would have looked pretty silly, don't you think? And the third person didn't know whether the second person drew an animal's head, or a man's head, or a lady's head, or a bird's head, or what it was. And so he didn't think that his picture was going to be so bad by putting a giraffe body on it in the same way all the way down the picture. And you'd just be surprised at all the funny looking things that you can, you can make just by doing this fold over art so that each person as they are drawing doesn't know what the other person has drawn. And perhaps you would even want to turn the paper sideways every once in a while while you were drawing so that the hat would be going this way and the head would be going this way and the body would be going this way and maybe the feet would be going the other way. That's even making it a little bit sillier than this one was. So that's one thing that you can have a lot of fun with, doing this fold over art. And then there's shadow drawing too. Have you ever done any shadow drawing? Well, perhaps you can right where you're sitting, especially if there's a window in your room. Now, there's a window that's right over here, and there's light coming in from the window. And you can see that if I put my hand down here on the paper, it casts a shadow on the paper. And yet, there's light coming through the window of the door behind me, so that really, it's casting two shadows on the paper. Now, that's a lot of fun to just do it like that, too. Let's see what we get by drawing.
around these two shadows of my hand here. There. Now that we take the hand away, can you see a picture of something and the outline of the shadow that we drew here? Can you? You know, I bet we could put some teeth down here, like this, and perhaps, mm, let's see. awful looking eye right there like that and we could give him some ears and it could be some sort of a growly animal couldn't it <laughs> let's try something else here's a lamp that I have right here that's going to help us I think if we turn the lamp on here and remove this paper if we turn this lamp on that'll give us even more light you see let's take another kind of an object here here's a pine cone Let's put that pine cone down there on the paper. You can take any object that you can find around your house. Now, it's not its not uh, throwing too, too big of a shadow, is it? Right there. If we move the light, there comes a shadow, even a little bit better. Or if we put the light over here, how's that going to work? It's throwing a shadow around here. Let's trace around it and see what we have. There. That's what we have. Now, what kind of a picture can we make from this? Well, let's see. You really have to use your imagination, don't you? A grandmother, a little girl. It's surprising the things that you can make just out of using these shadows. Shall we try another one? Let's try one on and and um, perhaps if you just have the paper and you have um, nothing to work with by yourself, see if you can figure out what we could make from this shadow that that I'm going to draw right here in just a minute. There. Now, what could that be? Turn it around almost any way that you want to. What do you suppose you could draw out of that? Well, see if you thought of the same thing that I'm thinking of here. Had you thought of that at all? I think maybe I got his ear on a little bit upside down. But you try some of this shadow art. You can have lots and lots of fun with it, especially...